Stores open at like 10, but no one goes there until like 3. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. If this is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. This video is part two in my video about my trip to Italy series. Series, I mean, I'm only doing three videos about it and I already have part one, so this is the second one coming out about my trip to Italy. You understand the point. Anyway, my first video was just about going to Italy, experiencing the trip, the travel, showing you pictures and videos about the scenery mostly. And so I wanted to make a separate video about the luxury shopping experience because shopping in Italy is kind of its own separate thing versus like experiencing Italy. So I just, I made two different videos. I decided I might as well. So if you're here, then hopefully you will enjoy this video. And if you aren't here for that reason, then I don't know why you're here, but hopefully you enjoy anyway if you continue to watch. If you can't tell, I have been away from the camera for a little bit. I'm trying to film all this in a timely manner, so I've also been talking for a long time, but I just wanted to share this experience with you and I hope that you enjoy. And I'm gonna just go ahead and get started by saying, first of all, I did not know this about Italy before I went. Obviously, a lot of the things I learned about Italy, I learned while in Italy, but stores open at like 10, but no one goes there until like three. And that's something that my friend and I continually discovered when we were going like shopping or anything is that the streets were like empty from like 10 o'clock to like two. And then everybody like magically appeared out of the woodwork in the concrete at like 2.45. There, it was so busy. Like I could walk into Louis Vuitton. I could walk into Chanel. I could walk into Dior without any problem before two. And then at three o'clock, not only did you have a wait, but there was like a line down the street for some of these stores. So that was just really interesting to like realize. So we just went for the days that we were there, we're just like, all right, we're going to have an early start because then we will have the place to ourselves basically, as opposed to like literally having to wait in line, which neither of us really wanted to do. On that note, I actually didn't end up going into Chanel in Italy because we only discovered the waiting in line thing a little bit later in the day. Like we went early one day and there was no line, but we decided to not do Chanel at that time. And then the next time we came back, there was a line down the block. And so we didn't think that there was a point really. It would have been fun to go in just to see the different things that Chanel had in Italy versus like my own home store. But it's not like there was a savings to be made because of the Chanel price increase that just happened. All the prices were for the most part pretty harmonized. So I wasn't going to like get a deal or anything. I might've just found like an off season piece that might've been cool to get but you know I wasn't really looking. So aside from Chanel though we went into quite a few places. We went to YSL, Dior, Hermes, Versace, Bulgari, so Lueve. So we, we, we certainly had our fill and share of doing the luxury shopping and I'm going to tell you about like the most interesting parts today so you're not listening to 75 minutes of me just like and then we went to this store and then we went to this store so I'm gonna give you like a little bit of a trunk shaded story here but I still hope that it'll be entertaining. I got plenty of pictures to show you. We did go into Louis Vuitton and Louis Vuitton was really fun fun. I did go into Louis Vuitton hoping to purchase something that I was not successful purchasing. As some of you might know, I am head over heels in love with my recto verso from Louis Vuitton. I have it in the monogram print and I really have been wanting it in the Damier Azure as well and I have not been able to find it anywhere. It is not in the US. None of my contacts can help me. Client services can't help me. There's no place to get this piece in the United States. And I thought, hey, why don't I check Italy? However, when I went to Italy and I checked the Louis Vuitton website in Italy, it also said out of stock, but I figured I'd still ask. So when we went to Louis Vuitton, I asked and there was nothing there. They did have some Damiazur pieces. They had a Victorine wallet. They had a card holder daily. They had a Rosalie coin purse and they also had a Zoe wallet. And I looked at them. I even actually considered the card holder daily and the Victorine, but in the end I decided not to get either. The Victorine especially would have been a pretty big savings in Italy because Louis Vuitton is much less expensive. In fact, most luxury brands are much less expensive in Europe than they are in the States and you get that back and the Euro is not very strong right now in comparison to the dollar. I mean, they're about equal dollars, even a little bit more. So there's a lot of savings to be had in luxury shopping, which I was able to take advantage of, but in Louis Vuitton, I really liked the Victorine wallet, but I wanted the Recto Verso, so I wouldn't have been saving money. I would have just been spending money and buying something that was instead of the thing I really wanted. And I talked about this before in actually a video I just did, My Best Luxury Decisions, where I don't buy stand-in pieces or settling pieces, or I try not to very hard. And I feel like the Victorine wallet would have been a settling for the Recto Verso, and I want the Recto Verso, so I'm gonna just try to wait for that. 
It was really fun to walk around though. We were offered refreshments. I ended up getting a very, very, very strong little coffee, like probably an espresso. And it was fun to just wander around the store. We had about a 20 minute wait before an essay saw us, but there was no line about the door or anything. It was just like kind of busy. And so that was fine. We got to look at the ready to wear and browse around. We got to look at the trunk painting area and there is like a little section that had furniture. So it was really, really cool to just see. There's also a little display with like Petula and Vivian and I think the male character whose name I don't know there is you know just some really cute stuff to look at so that was really fun we ended up making a purchase at Louis Vuitton and it was my friend's and it was her very first Louis Vuitton purchase actually and it was a book she bought the Milan guidebook and it was really cute I mean she is not a huge luxury lover she kind of humors me and she appreciates the finer things but she's not a big you know big into bags or anything like her most fanciest bag is coach and I gave that to her so she you know but it was fun to look at and she is big into books though she's big into books she collects books and they're her thing so when I told her that Louis Vuitton has guidebooks for different places and that they I think they had a Milan one she was really excited they did have it so we did purchase it and that was about 30 euros and she was very happy it was cute to take a picture of her with her very first Louis Vuitton purchase and her Louis Vuitton bag so that was fun that was fun she also into paper crafts so she might end up dismantling the bag to put in a journal or something I have no idea it, but I hope that she enjoys it. We also went to Dior and Dior was really really cool to look through because I don't actually have a Dior in my state so I can only see Dior when I visit other places like Florida or whatever so it was nice to like see Dior in Italy. They had several different stories. The first floor was SLGs, bags, they also had like scarves and stuff and then the second floor was clothes and ready to wear and shoes and the really neat thing about the second floor was they had a live model wearing one of their dresses walking around. I didn't take any pictures because I did not feel comfortable doing so but it was just really cool just like this tall ethereal person walking around in an equally ethereal dress like it covered in chiffon just like walking around the halls of the Dior boutique. It was, it was an interesting experience, you know, something that you don't really see here that often. I did really look at the De Hiver collection, which is the fall winter collection that Dior has out because I love the bag. It's beautiful. I wasn't really ready to buy a new and boutique Lady Dior bag, especially because I, not only does Dior not hold value super much, but I don't think I get enough use out of a Lady Dior to purchase one. I did look at it very longingly though and take a couple of pictures but I really like the Dehiver print and so I had been looking at some of the SLGs, some of the tablewares, and the scarf and the scarf is what I kept looking back at. I even ended up trying on the the winter scarf and it was really nice. It was very beautiful. I ended up not choosing it just because I didn't love the fact that it wasn't embroidered. It was just the print and I liked the print more on the uh, silk scarf as opposed to the cashmere winter scarf. I was also worried about it getting dirty. I do live in a state that has cold weather like slush and snow and sleet and so a off-white cream colored scarf with a beautiful pattern on it might get really dirty really fast so I did say no to it but it is still kind of on my mind and it because it, it was so beautiful I'm still interested in purchasing something in that print maybe uh, I'm just kind of looking at see what they have but unfortunately I didn't have any of the tablewares which was the other thing that we were interested in so uh, you know we were kind of out of luck with that but still it was really cool to just you know be able to browse went to Bulgari for a little bit I wanted to see the serpenti bag in person or Serpenti. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's Serpenti. Serpenti. I don't know. Snake. The snake bag. They have several. I was particularly interested in the East West in the gray color because I thought it was a really nice gray from the pictures on the website. When I got there in person though it had a little bit more of a green undertone than I liked and it actually was a lot smaller than I thought. I, I, I had no idea really the frame of reference because who knows what bags actually are from the size of the models. I, you, you can never tell. But seeing it in person it was actually very quite small. Uh, probably Probably as small as maybe like a small classic flap in capacity but like in more so you could even fit kind of less and in general I find that bulgari bags are quite narrow uh, they're very beautiful the leather was very nice but you know there was nothing really about it that made me want to get it sort of thing it was really nice to go into the store though very beautiful kind of poor lighting which is not atypical of boutiques we also looked at some of the wallets and the card holders and my friend was interested in their flap card holder wallet it's like a bifold green on the outside this beautiful purple on the inside and they didn't have that one in and they said they weren't going to be getting it into stock until like next Wednesday which would be a little bit too late for us so unfortunately not no thing for that either but still fun to look at them fun to browse we went into Versace Versace was a lot of fun it was a four-story building and each story had like a different thing or might have been six stories and we only went up to four but the first was like 
bags, and then was shoes, and then was menswear, and then was women's wear, and it was just, there was a lot to look at. And so we were able to browse for a really long time and just kind of have fun. And then when we were ready to look at things specifically for us, then a, an essay came over and, and we were able to talk to her. I tried on a couple of ready to wear pieces, so did my friend. We were pretty much interested in Versace. My friend really wanted a pair of silk shorts, but unfortunately it wasn't the season for that. So she tried on the silk skirt, the Barocco print, and she did like it very much, but she knew that she'd get more use out of shorts. So she decided to pass. I tried on this really, really cool hoodie, which I really liked. I, I'm actually, I don't know if you can really tell from my videos because I'm not really overt about it. I, I do wear hoodies a lot in my videos, but I do have a pretty street style kind of style all of the time where I just, I wear hoodies a lot. I like being big and comfy and cozy. And I, I do think that's a very cute aesthetic. I, I'm very partial to hoodies and I tried this one on in the music print, I think it is. But I mean, Versace ready to wear goes on sale 50% off twice a year. And so I couldn't really justify spending like literally double the price of what it would be in like another month or two. So I did not go for it, but I am thinking about it. It was a thousand euros, something like that. And then it would be down to probably like 500 something, you know, because those pieces generally do 50% off in like January. And so I mean, I'll think about it in the future. If it had been during the sale, I might have had more of a reason to go for it. But, I, you know, I just, there's no point in buying Versace ready to wear full price unless it's like a really sought after piece. So Hermes was an interesting experience because it wasn't, it wasn't a very pleasant one. I went in specifically with some pieces in mind. I was looking for a Verso Bastia in a bright pop of color. I had a tablewares item that I really was interested in that I thought I might as well try to get in Italy. And so we went and we asked, and oh, there were a couple of scarves that I wanted to look at also because in Italy you get a little bit of a discount. I normally would just shop at my local Hermes boutique. I might as well be loyal to my essay there. But I figured I was here and I there are some things that sometimes you can't find. So I had checked and Italy had some of these items in stock and so I, I asked for them. The essay was not rude but certainly not friendly. Uh, she didn't ask for either of our names, she didn't give us her name, and she was kind of like, oh you want to look at SLGs, great, you know, like kind of that attitude a little bit. Same thing for the scarves, like she really didn't, like I asked for a specific scarf in a specific colorway and she kind of was just like, I don't, like she was like, we don't have that one, we have this colorway. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't want that colorway, I don't need to see it. And then she was like mad that I didn't want to look at the scarf in like the bright orange as opposed to the dark blue. So that was just, it wasn't the great experience. Um, I also, again, when I asked for the tray, which was a very beautiful one that I'm still on the lookout for, I ended up coming home and then just asking my Hermes boutique for it. And they said they're going to be able to order it for me in November from another store. So I'm just gonna like wait on that, it's not a big deal. But when I asked about the tray, she said, oh, we don't have that one, we have this one instead. And she showed us one of the um, wood lacquer trays, which are, I think, something like $1,200, so about double the price of the tray I was looking at. And it also didn't look like the tray at all. It was just like the tray that I was interested in had a cat on it, and that one also had a different, completely different colored cat. I mean, I understand the point of upselling, but it had nothing to do with what I asked for. And then she ended up saying like, oh, well, we have these other trays. And she showed me the little shelf of the trays that were all display only. And then I asked about one. She's like, oh, that's display only. And I'm like, then what's the point here? They did have some beautiful bags on display. They had a bunch of most robust uh, bags. Um, they had some Rulies, they had some mini Kellys, they had some Bolides, like that were all obviously display only. But I mean, I didn't feel comfortable taking pictures in the store and they don't like you to do that anyway. So I didn't even bother trying. I did take some pictures of the store front though, because they had these really beautiful displays in their windows. And the, uh, and I'll show you these pictures, they were by a specific artist. And the really cool thing was the display windows also had like items from Hermes, like shoes or a tie or whatever. And so Hermes also had like a little placard that said how much each thing cost and, oh, or like, the bourse, the bag, display only. <laughs> that was kind of funny, but it was really cool to look at the window display. Speaking of really cool displays, I didn't mention this before, but I'm going to mention it now. Louis Vuitton had this really beautiful, like, courtyard that you only were able to get access to if you left the building. So you went in through one door and then you exited through a different door and that door took you into the courtyard. And the courtyard was beautiful. It had a bunch of different like painted walls and windows and this really pretty statue in the middle. So my friend and I just stared there for a little bit, just like looking at the artwork in that courtyard. It was really, really nice and kind of like an experience you wouldn't have gotten if you didn't go to the store. So we had no idea. And yeah, that was just like a really cool like 
pop of color and experience from Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton was a fun experience. I did enjoy that and I'm glad that we were able to get something from there because it was a fun memento of that time. We also went to Saint Laurent. So YSL was a stop that I really wanted to do because there is a bag that I have been eyeing for months. I've tried it on numerous times. I've shared it on my Instagram numerous times and I had been wanting this bag for ages, specifically in a colorway. And so I was telling myself, you know, if I'm going to buy anything in Italy, it should probably be this bag because it is never going to be cheaper at any point in time unless you buy pre-loved and even then you can't really get that particular bag at a good price pre-love necessarily. And in Italy, it's certainly much cheaper than the US. It was cheaper by about like $700. And then obviously you get that back too. And so that was kind of my plan. I tried it on, I got a lovely essay named Laura. She was very kind, very attentive. She let us like look as long as we wanted and try on a bunch of different things. I tried on the medium envelope bag. I tried on the college bag in the large size and the college bag in the medium size. And I looked at some other things, but those are the, the main that I was looking at. It's actually really cute because I was looking at the envelope bag in black with silver hardware. And there was another woman in the same area who was looking at the black with gold hardware and the black on black. And she saw me trying on the silver and she like asked her essay something and then the essay asked if she could try it on. I said, of course, it was, it was the display, you know, the display bag anyway. So like, sure, why not? And so she took it and she tried on the mirror and then she handed it back to me and then I tried it on. And then she asked the, the woman who was trying it on, not the essay, the woman who was only speaking Italian was like pointing to the gold one and then pointing to me like, do you want to try the gold one on? So we kind of like traded bags. It was just really cute. It was a cute like exchange of, we didn't, we didn't speak the same language, but we both spoke handbag. So we were just kind of trading it off back and forth. She was looking at herself and taking pictures. And then she like looked at me and was just like, and I was like, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> you know, it looks good. So that was, it was just really cute. It was fun. It was a fun little experience. The upstairs of Saint Laurent was amazing. It was ginormous and just like fully mirrored, which was a little bit confusing sometimes. You did look at yourself and look into the abyss for a while, but like they had a bunch of ready to wear and shoes up there. And we just like wandered for a while uh, in between like going and looking at the bags. So just Wandering down the halls, I took a bunch of videos and pictures because I felt fine doing that. Like there was only me and my friend and our reflections into infinity. So I didn't feel like I was taking up anybody's time or being judged or anything. And then we went back down, we looked at the bags and I did end up making a decision and I was just, I bought it and I was very, very happy that I did. Especially in fact, because YSL just had a recent price increase. So the bag went up in price in both uh, USD and in euros. So while I already saved money on the bag buying it in Europe, I ended up saving like even more now that it's increased in price by so much. I'm going to be sharing the bag in its own separate video. Sorry to tease you. I mean, I, I was trying to be upfront that the bag isn't being showcased today. It is a YSL purchase and I'm very, very happy with it. I'm so glad I bought it. I'm so glad I bought it when I did and that I convinced myself to finally make the plunge, take the plunge, take the leap, do the thing. So I will be sharing that with you in a third and final video. If you want to see that video, I do recommend subscribing to my channel and you know, hitting the notification bell so you always see when I post new videos such as this one or other talky videos if you like those sorts of things. But yeah, that unboxing is going to be coming in a bit. Um, and I'm really excited to share it. And I'm also really excited to share it so that I can start wearing it and like sharing it on Instagram and stuff because I like this bag a lot. I wanted this bag for months. I've tried it on so many times and this time I actually did the thing. So, you know, you might be able to guess what I got based on what I talked about today because, you know, I only talked about the envelope, the college and the other college. I also looked at the Lulu and I looked at the Lulu very hard because I was interested in the medium Lulu earlier uh, in the year and last year, but I really like the small Lulu. It's just that they don't hold their shape and they don't wear well in what I've seen. And so I just, I didn't feel comfortable buying one. I, I'm very happy with the bag I bought. I do think the small Lulu is super duper cute, but I think if I was going to get one, I'd probably get it pre-loved. That, that's all to say, you know, unboxing to come. Sorry about that. I hope that you enjoyed listening to me talk about the luxury experience in a variety of stores though. The last store I went to, by the way, before we left Milan was Loewe, and that was really fun. The essay was very nice. I looked at, we looked at the wallets and card holders because friend, again, my friend was interested in the wallets and card holders. There was one that she liked, but it wasn't like enough to make the purchase right then and there. 
but I looked at the Amazonia bag, the, the 16 size. It's so cute and it's in this beautiful like blue. I don't remember what the color of the blue is, but I'll put a picture for you. It's such a cute little bag and it's like a great size and it, it fit my phone. Like this is an iPhone uh, 13 Pro, not the Max, the Pro. I don't know if the Max would fit, but the iPhone 13 Pro like fit in that bag. It's such a like, it's just, just so cute. It's so cute. I, I really, I hadn't like seen it before on my, and it wasn't on my radar. Um, I like Loewe's SLGs, but I wasn't a huge fan of a lot of their bags, but I really like the Amazonia. Maybe I'm late to the party, uh, probably, I don't know. I really, I have to think about that bag because I really liked it. I really liked it in the blue. And it's just a cute little shape. So that was fun. Essay was super attentive. I really enjoyed her. Loewe is interesting because they're ready to wear and their choice of decoration and their choice of layout of shop is very interesting. It, it's unusual, it's artsy, it's kind of like not, it's not anywhere near run of the mill even for, you know, a fashion house. It's just kind of like, kind of odd in a lot of cases. I don't mean odd in a bad way, it's just like, it's a little bit like, you know, topsy-turvy, like odd. And so it was kind of like interesting to be in a store for, that was designed by Loewe to showcase Loewe things because sometimes you're just like tilting your head the weird a weird way or like look or squinting in the dark or something so that was kind of fun uh, it was a good experience there too I appreciated the essay the only experience that was kind of a little bit off-putting was probably Hermes and you know that's uh that's pretty par of the course with them I think for a lot of people um I've been pretty fortunate and that I've had fairly good experiences mostly with Hermes um, I've had some not so great ones too besides Italy, but for the most part I've had decent experiences with my home boutique at least. But yeah, I could see why people would say that like Hermes is snobby if like the Italy experience was the only one they got. For the most part, my essays were very, very kind and friendly and attentive. They also gave us space when we asked for it basically. My favorite was definitely Laura from YSL. She was fantastic. I would definitely recommend asking for her if you are for some reason in the YSL Italy in Milan. Not the one in the store, but the one on the streets. Uh, it's near the Versace and the Dior. Uh, she, she was great, so I would, I would recommend her, and I really enjoyed, you know, her time and her taking the time for us. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, before I end the video, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't mention this before. At Del Vo, there, there was a Del Vo in Milan, Italy. My goodness, I can't believe. I was, I was saying my closing statements. Well, you know, cut that, cut that. Del Vo. Oh my gosh, okay, so it was super cool. The first day we went, they were late. it was like six o'clock and they were closing. They closed at six and so we weren't able to go inside, but I did get a picture of me outside the store, which was a cute little thing. It was cool to see the boutique in person because I, you know, I haven't in such a long time. The last time I've seen a Delvo boutique was in New York in Barney's before it like closed down. And so I haven't actually seen a Delvo boutique boutique. So, you know, it was neat. We did end up going back the next day and I particularly wanted to look at the miniatures because as I talked a little bit about them in my Delvo unboxing, but Delvo does these mini bags basically. It's like super TBE energy where they have mini bags that represent different countries. And so of course they have bags for Belgium, they have bags for New York City, they have bags for France, they have bags for like South Korea and they have bags for Italy, and so I wanted to take a look at them. And Delvo has three miniatures per place, except for Belgium, where they have like six, I think. And I'll show you pictures of them here, because they are very, very Italy specific. All the bags are very like place specific. So for Italy, they have one that's of the Duomo, and it's hand painted, and it's really, really beautiful. It's cute. Obviously, they can't get the detail of the Duomo in the, the building of the tiny little bag, but you know, it's still the idea of it. They have a... Really? Well, that's up to you. They have one that's a marquee from Carnival, which, you know, Venice is famous for, the Carnival. Yeah, she was slamming her little body against the door. I had to let her in because otherwise it was just going to be ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk for the rest of this video. So now instead of ka-chunk, ka-chunk, you see a tail and hear meows. Hope that's fine. So they have one of the uh, Carnival, which is very colorful and bright, and then they have one of a Vespa, <laughs> which I think is so cute. And I love the Vespa one because the, the helmet, first of all, it's removable. You can take the helmet off and it's just got the bag handle on it. And if you look at the back of it, it's got a little license plate. That's Delvo 1829. I thought that was super cute. And I stared at them for a really long time. The essay was kind enough to allow me to take some pictures. So I was able to take some pictures with some of them on the bag. You know, I have to say I really was tempted and I wanted to get one, 
but I think I wanted to get one just for the sake of buying it, not because it had really a place in my collection. And that might change in the future. I can see myself wanting to get a different one at a later date and time, maybe from a different place, but I, something kept me from buying one of the Italy miniatures, and I don't know why. I, I don't know why, but I, I didn't feel like it was the right time to get a miniature from Italy, so I, I didn't, and I'm cool with that. I got to experience the boutique, I got to try some stuff on, I got to take a picture with the boutique front, and I'm happy with that being my experience for Delvo. So that rounds up my luxury shopping experience in Italy. That's the whole thing. I hope that that was a fine little segue slash addition, I guess. It wasn't a segue, it was an addition to something else. And I hope you don't mind my little cat uh, deciding to interrupt and set the stage here. But that was my entire experience for what that I can remember to share. <laughs> Those are my pictures and videos that I have. I hope that you did enjoy this video and if you liked it, please give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Must you?